first important thing to remember when making K-Tube videos, is not to make all your titles K-pop, example, my favorite K-pop releases, ranking K-pop comebacks of this month etc. It's best to write something like, my favorite releases of this month, or, ranking releases of this month. The reason for writing releases and not K-pop releases, is because sometimes people put K-Indie, K-R-N-B, K-Rock, or other genres of Korean music or even Japanese songs, English songs or other language translated versions by K-Pop artists, and those don't classify as K-Pop. Writing Korean releases instead of K-Pop releases, is better but still bad, because of the above reasons. Appropriate and good titles, can be one of these three, my favorite releases by Korean artists of this month, my favorite releases of this month, or monthly favorites, Korean artist releases. And if you're just sharing other songs in other genres languages by Korean artists, and are not making monthly favorites, then you can just write, some songs by Korean artists that I found, are Korean artists song recommendations etc. So remember to use one of the titles I suggested, so as to not label everything as K-pop, when there are other Korean genres as well, Korean songs in English, and original songs in other languages, or other language translated versions. I realized this recently, because before I used to promote songs that are not K-pop, and I used to put K-pop in the title. I know it now, so I'm sharing it with you guys. The next important thing to remember when making K-Tube videos, is that you can have similar or same opinions as other channels creators, but make sure to not label your opinions video as unpopular. The reason being is that a lot of K-Tubers have similar or same opinions, so labeling the title as unpopular, isn't really the best idea because the opinions y'all have, aren't really unpopular since other people use the same opinions as well. Example of similar opinions are, stop praising your idol for doing the bare minimum, and yes I've seen this a lot. Now I'm not hating any K-Tubers, or asking them to not make opinions videos, but I'm saying that don't label your opinions as unpopular, if there are some opinions that are used by others. Only use it, if your opinions are actually unpopular. Good titles can be, some one-sentence K-pop opinions or, some K-pop opinions. These titles work really well, and instead of writing unpopular, write these titles instead, because as I said some of y'all use the same or similar opinions, and they're not unpopular, and they're just unoriginal, and widely used opinions. The next important thing to remember when making K-Tube videos, is a long one, and something that I've talked about a million times, which is don't say something sucks, ruins K-pop or a year of K-pop was bland, boring or not as good as the last year or something. Examples of what I mean is that, 4th gen boy groups suck, or, noise music ruins K-pop, or things like, 2021 K-pop is boring, etc. The reason is that when someone says a generation boy girl group suck, or when someone says something ruins K-pop or a year in K-pop is bland or boring, how do they know these are actually true, when they're only judging them by the well-known side? Dot. A few bigger company, popular company or Nugu company girl boy groups debut in a generation, and are the only known or semi-known or popular K-pop groups, and y'all are ready to say a generation boy girl group sucks, something ruins K-pop, and a year of K-pop was boring and bland, when y'all don't even know every or enough of groups releases to make a judgment. How can y'all say a whole generation of girl or boy groups suck, when y'all are not even judging the whole generation, and are only judging a small portion of it? Like every year a large number of groups from both genders debut, and only about 6 to 7 or a little more, get slightly well known or popular, considering they come from a bigger company or a popular company or a Nugu company that can provide good MVs or something. In 2021 almost 60 plus girl groups debuted, and the years prior a lot of groups debuted as well from each gender. So for y'all to say a generation boy girl groups suck isn't valid, if y'all look at a small portion of groups and automatically think the whole generation of groups from that gender suck, when y'all don't take into account the smaller company groups that debut. Same goes for the noise music one and the a year of K-pop is boring one. Y'all shouldn't say noise music ruins K-pop, when y'all haven't checked out smaller company or super nugu groups and soloists to make a proper judgment. Yes I don't like noise music that much as well, but I've found some good noise music songs in K-pop. People first need to check out bigger and smaller groups both, and not only smaller groups is in groups who are less talked about, but smaller company ones with a little or small budget as well, and after doing a proper analysis, then you can say that noise music ruins K-pop, if you still think that there's nothing good about noise music. For people who say a year of music is boring or bland, y'all don't really know if it's actually boring or bland, if y'all are looking at only bigger releases. 
There's so many underrated songs by soloists, groups and artists in K-pop that get overshadowed by bigger releases, and don't get noticed, and y'all don't really notice them and yet y'all are ready to judge without properly analyzing. Wow. People only make judgments like the ones I mentioned above, because they're looking at the well-known side of K-pop. The K-pop with a budget. The K-pop with high-quality MVs, a budget to promote, and a budget to make albums each comeback if they want to, and the budget to even make a comeback quickly without having to save money for the comeback. Why do y'all only judge things from the well-known perspective of K-pop, when that's not the only K-pop that exists? Why can't y'all put smaller groups into your equations so that y'all are properly making judgments? Bigger or well-known or semi-well-known groups aren't the only ones present in K-pop. The ones who struggle to make it also exist, and look at them as well, before saying things. The next important thing to remember when making K-tube videos, is to not make videos when a scandal is hot and fresh, and you're giving your opinions. I know I already talked about this in my unpopular K-pop opinions video, but I think it's best if you just wait for more information before speaking on a scandal, that doesn't even have its full evidence information out. Because when you give fresh information on a fresh scandal, you're just giving your opinions based on that one piece of evidence. People need to know that if they want to share thoughts on a scandal, they should wait for enough or all the information to come out, so they can do a proper analysis of the situation, and give their thoughts fully and completely. Because imagine if you just share your thoughts on the situation when the scandal is fresh, then you're making a video with your thoughts, you could either be calling the idol bad things, or defending them. There also could be some K-tubers who just take fresh information, and then have decided what side they're on. It's best if you stay neutral, and pick sides later when all the information is released, and there's nothing denying you from the truth, and you find out who's the real victim, and who's the real criminal. The last important thing to remember when making K-tube videos, is to not feel pressured to upload. What I mean to say is that, you probably have an upload schedule and then you miss the day you have to upload on, maybe because of certain reasons. Don't feel like just because you missed your upload day you have to make a video. No you don't. You don't have to make one just because you feel like you need to. Also even if you don't have a schedule, and you just upload anytime you want, like me, then this same thing still applies. Don't feel pressured or think you have to upload just because you haven't and you want to give your subs new videos. If you feel like you haven't uploaded a new video, and you're forcing yourself to make one because you haven't in a while or missed your upload schedule date, then you can make a 1 or 2 minute video or a K-pop short or something that is less, and doesn't require much editing. This way you can have peace of mind and won't feel pressured anymore, and also will have a video up that is still something. So please if you're feeling pressured to upload because of the reasons I said above, then don't upload just because you need to. Upload because you want to, and when you want to. Where am I?